Cars Sumo Conference, then you probably might know that driving an emergency vehicle is a very challenging and um, dangerous task because the risk of being involved in an emergency vehicle traffic accident is much higher than for other traffic participants. So it's very important that we support uh, the drives of emergency vehicles. So and therefore we have um, one project, for example, Serena, which is taking care of this. And I also um, did a lot of research during my PhD studies um, to improve the traffic safety for emergency vehicles and also to reduce the travel time for them. Because um, uh, emergency vehicles have to violate a red traffic light so that they can reach the incident location as fast as possible. But that's a very risky task so that they are having often their um, a traffic accident. So the idea is to uh, modify the traffic lights in a way, in an intelligent uh, way, so that they don't have to pass red traffic lights and also reach the incident location faster. And therefore, it's not very surprisingly, we use the simulation tool Sumo. I think I don't have to explain anything more. And we also have a test field in Brunswick for the Serena project, where we could also uh, implement the strategies we um, um, simulated before. So on the motivation always is that, uh, first of all, we have the real world traffic situa situation and um, from real world data, we can drive an, a model like an emergency vehicle model here and uh, use this traffic simulation to uh, see how uh, intelligent strategies um, could look like, like and um, whether this have an improvement and then um, put this everything back to real world when uh, the simulation shows that it's very working here. And that's the same we um, did here in this research. And uh, But before we have to look uh, what other uh, systems are there already? So if we go to a fire brigade station, then we might see um, some red and yellow button there, which they can press when they know, okay, um, I have to go to an incident location, this, there, therefore I have to turn right. So I press the red button and the traffic light um, in the red side is turning red uh, for two minutes for all the traffic participants and to green for the dry direction of the fire brigade here. So, and if the fire brigade doesn't know in which direction they have to go because they don't know um, where the incident location is, they the, just press both buttons. And you can imagine this is not a very intelligent way of doing something like this. It's, it's working somehow, but uh, if you're standing there at an red traffic light for two minutes and you don't know why, it might feel a little bit bad. So there are also other systems uh, which are more intelligent here. So we have the FAST system, FAST Emergency Vehicle Preemption System, which is implemented in Japan and Tokyo. And there it's working like this, that uh, there are sensors along the street and they are detecting emergency vehicles. So when they're detecting one, they can reduce the red times or extend the green times of the following um, traffic light. So the idea is that the emergency uh, vehicle can go reach the intersection by, via a um, green traffic light. But uh, it shows in reality, this is not always the case because other traffic participants might cross the way or blocking. So it often happened that they still have to uh, um, pass the intersection with a red traffic light. So that was the beginning. And then there's another um, approach, um, which is called Stream from Siemens, which is implemented in Böbling in Germany. And uh, this approach uses the priori prioritization um, strategy of public transport. So the emergency vehicle has an onboard unit um, equipped and is sending the GPS positions all the time. And then there are virtual detection points. Um, so when the emergency vehicle reaches the first, here in this uh, intersection yellow, 
um, detection point, then everything is prepared for the traffic light to switch to a green phase for the emergency vehicle. This is normally um, in the point of the um, second point uh, in red here in the uh, intersection. And for the whole time, the uh, emergency vehicle needs to reach the third point, the, um, the, the, the traffic light is um, staying on green for the emergency vehicle and then goes back to normal operation. So actually this is a, a good idea. And I also presented um, an approach um, at the SUMO conference for two years, where I uh, looked at just one single intersection as the other approaches as well. And uh, the idea was that um, the other approaches are not looking at the other um, vehicles which are there at the intersection. So we want to have um, a green time for the emergency vehicle as short as possible, but as long as necessary. So that the other traffic participant don't, doesn't have to wait um, too long when I switch the, the traffic light um, a long time before. But if there are other traffic participants waiting in front of the tra traffic light, it needs more time um, for a longer green time so that they can pass. So I have a formula um, how you can calculate how much time this is needed. So I was told that uh, when you print a formula on slides, then you're losing half of the audience. So if you feel sleepy now, then please take the chat window and just place it um, over the, the formula and then you feel better and you can just listen to me. So this is working good for this one intersection, but if you are looking um, normally on more intersections uh, in, a, in one city, so it might cause the, pro um, the problem that um, you have this one intersection and you want to let all the vehicles pass, but there's not uh, enough space um, on the edge after the intersection because there's another traffic light, which is red. So um, sometimes this not really helps if you have a very jammed uh, traffic network here. So the idea was that you have a more intelligent way here with my approach that um, you look uh, whether um, the um, vehicles at the first intersection have enough, uh, can pass intersection and um, there's enough capacity and if not, then you have to switch the later uh, intersection um, earlier than normally for the waiting vehicles at the second intersection. And this um, approach is called Wallaby here. It's an acronym for a very, very long German word. You don't have to remember this because by coincident, oh, it happened that's the letters of my name. So it's much easier to remember this. And for you, it's only um, you have to know when I sim um, compare the simulation studies here for the different approaches. So we have uh, different simulation um, scenarios, which I simulated with this approach. And, uh, but I only have the time here to show you one corridor. And I simulated each approach, uh, which I uh, wanted to compare here, um, 50 uh, simulation runs with the same um, traffic demand and for different traffic demands. And it was one hour, which was simulated. And of course, uh, like I said, we have this real world um, um, scenario in Brunswick, which also was um, then implemented in Brunswick in real world, which was also simulated here. So when we look at the simulation scenario at the corridor, it looks like this in, uh, in Sumo, then we have an emergency vehicle, which is always uh, driving this orange line here in one or the other direction, doesn't matter here. Uh, the idea was that uh, the emergency vehicle always has to go over more than one intersection, but um, all the other traffic participants here, they can't go in um, every direction. So we have different routes here and um, have a random um, traffic demand in here. And if we look at the simulation results here, uh, for the different approaches, 
we can see here in this um, uh, diagram the average travel time in seconds, uh, which is needed for this uh, small scenario here for an um, intersection where um, every street has 200 meters, is 300 meters long. And then we have in blue the um, worst case, let's say, uh, without an application. This means that the uh, emergency vehicle is always driving like a normal vehicle and has to stop at um, every red traffic light. So um, the results are as expected that if you have um, a rising traffic volume per lane, then of course the travel time is rising. Um, in orange, you see the approach fast. Fast was the approach where only the, um, the green time was extended or the red uh, time was reduced. And you can see that it's uh, better than without an application, but um, at some stages when it's um, when the traffic um, um, volume is very high, then it um, uh, has not such a big influence because then it's just uh, skipping um, the, the traffic phase and it still has yeah, um, has to wait then there yeah, when all, until all the other traffic participants are, are past the intersection. And then we have a stream and wallaby results here. Uh, at the beginning, they are very similar. So also this is not very surprising because uh, when there's not so much traffic volume, they are more or less working the same because they are just looking at um, the intersection which is in front of the uh, emergency vehicle. But that, uh, then at one, uh, some stage when the traffic volume rises, it happens more often that um, the capacity of the following um, edges is not enough to take all the vehicles from the first intersection. So you can see the benefits here of the Wallaby uh, results. And you might be surprised, so uh, actually it was expected that the emergency vehicle should uh, get a green wave all the time and so has not to stop and not to wait at all. But as you can clearly see, um, when you have really high traffic volume there, then um, uh, it's still uh, the traffic, um, the travel time is rising. And that uh, happens because uh, when the simulation is run before we have like a, one, a warming up period, so the traffic network is already very crowded. And then you set in the emergency vehicle, but it cannot, um, it, um, sense the sense that um, it should the intersection should um, switch to green, but it still needs some time because uh, it was just set in in the um, simulation. And you can um, think that's um, somehow the same in real world because uh, before there's an emergency call, you cannot um, uh, change the traffic lights. It's you and just uh, change it when uh, it's the emergency vehicle starts its drive. So like I say here, you can see on the picture that um, in a real um, fire brigade car, which is driving in Brunswick and has a green wave here. And that's very nice that you can see that's really working. And you can also see this uh, for the Brunswick scenario and the simulation. And it's really nice that you can see that it's uh, this approach really um, would improve the travel times and the traffic safety for emergency vehicles. So, um, um, yeah, that, that's, that's very great. And the um, impact is not um, so negative for other traffic uh, participants because it's reduced so that only for the um, surrounding traffic is really regarded. But there are some limitations. Um, you have to take care of conflicting routes with each other. So then, uh, because when they are coming at the same intersection, that's a problem which is um, also in real world uh, now. But um, yeah, of course, this had, has to be handled with the um, algorithm. And this algorithm could also be improved um, when you use guidance for other traffic participants that they, for example, know how they should react to the emergency vehicle and. Uh, drive right or turn somehow so that um, the way is free for them. So, yeah, thank you very much. It feels a little bit uh, for me like a cliffhanger because there's so much to say, 
So you can ask me now or later uh, via email or um, wonder me. And thank you for, very much for listening and I'm happy to answer every question. <laughs>